All right, there was another uh, story, this one in The Observer, uh, about the Bucks and Omega and Hangman and the thoughts that uh, they are staying. Um, that's, the, that's the thoughts. That's what people there are saying. They have not said that at all, you know. Um, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I've talked in, in at length and written at length about, you know, their situation as far as, you know, what's the best thing for them. And they've talked to people with WWE about them. And, you know, I mean, it's it, the, the, with, with, you know, with, with Matt and Nick and Omega, the thing is, is that they have employee status and the schedule is, is very, very beneficial. Now it's possible that they could have signed Omega and, um, given him like the edge schedule or, or a little bit more than the edge schedule. Um, but I don't see him, you know, wanting to do the Seth Rollins schedule, you know, like, like that level, um, or what Cody Rhodes is doing. Um, it would just be, you know, it'd be hard on his body at this stage of the game. So, you know, you'd have to do, you know, special circumstances, which they can do if they wanted to. And, and perhaps they would, you know, because Omega could come in and really be a giant difference maker. Um, you know, the way that WWE does tag teams, uh, could the young books be giant difference makers? I don't know. I mean, it's possible. It depends on, you know, it isn't Vince, it is triple H. So that changes things. Although Vince obviously can change anything and, and might and will, and you know, you get it, you know, whatever, you can't trust anything. Um, but for them, I mean, they have young kids and they can make money either place. So it's like the schedule, like it's not even like with the young bucks, like working fewer dates. It's the fact of more time at home, more time with their family. And so because of that, I always thought that while I never closed my mind to the idea of them going to, to, to WWE, it's it's a lot more beneficial to their lifestyle to not. Plus, um, you know, Tony values them highly. I just hope that they... um seem to be well i mean the, they, they you know they they were in a program and the program ended so now we have to see what the new program is for them but um i mean adam page i could i could have um you know even though he's he's got a kid i mean the one thing with him is is you know he's young enough um and good enough but you never know in wwe you know i mean there's because everyone in wwe is is good and a lot of the stuff he does, he would be encouraged not to do in WWE. Um, and I mean, it's it's a risk. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of benefit. You know, I mean, I was talking to somebody or you know, messaging somebody in WWE. And we were talking about the one thing is, is there's a lot of benefit of having that exposure, especially after late in your career and after you retire. Um, I mean, there there there's benefits there if you are any kind of a star there. And I mean, it's not even just money, you know, money short term. Sure. But, um, you know, like it just, um, you know, I mean, it, it, I, again, most of the time, you know, wrestlers will stay with their company because it's just kind of like with, you know, you have your friends, you have your routine, you know, you get used to it, but it's the guys who actually make moves and leave, um, that, that, you know, they, they refresh themselves. And they become they either way. I mean, I, I'm John Moxley. If he had not left WWE, I mean, he he would have done well in WWE if he stayed, but not as well as he did. I don't think at all. I don't think he'd been as fulfilled or anything like that. Cody Rhodes, on the other hand, I don't think for a second Cody Rhodes would have had the year, the last two years he's had staying in AEW. So it's like, um, you know, and for Omega. I mean, there's 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 good arguments for him to go, but the schedule is a tough one. But uh, you know, and these guys, they are friends. They do want to stick together. And um, you know, again, I mean, I just remember, like, you know, in with even with dealing with with some of them, and it's it's at the end of the day, you know, the real thing is, you know, people look money this, money that. Um, it's really more about lifestyle and fun because if you're gonna make big big money either place. What's your decision? Your decision is lifestyle or fun and fun. It's not about, you know, a, you know, an extra couple of dollars. Brian Danielson didn't leave over money. Brian Danielson left because it was where he thought he could do what he wanted to do more. And in his own weird way, um, and not and he may be like one of the few who ever 
uh, ever made a decision based on this. Mick Foley did it as well when he went to, when he went to TNA. Um, but Brian did consider the greater good, and he thought, you know, what would be best for the industry as a whole. And he felt that the industry as a whole, the best thing for him was to help the smaller company. And he had no no negatives about WWE or anything, but he did think that he would have better matches if he left. And there was always the Japan thing, which he still hasn't gone. Um, but you know, Japan's also changed since, since he made that decision. But, um, you know, so it's like, it's like, you know, the, the people, when they look at this, just, yeah, money's always a big thing. And people think, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, you go with money, you go to WWE and that's for some people, that's exactly what it is. But like for Roosh, just as an example, you know, he's, he's going to make way more in AEW than he was ever going to make in WWE. And he made the right decision for him, you know, financially, you know, um, whereas the other, these other guys, they're they're going to make big money no matter where they go. So at that point, it just becomes where are you more comfortable? Where are you happy? What suits your family the best? And for, you know, guys with um, guys with kids, um, AW is is a better place to go. WWE may be better for your career. But with the young bucks, it's like their career is their career. You know what I mean? It's not like I, I it's, it, yeah, maybe, maybe WWE would be the right move at this point. I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but they're, you know, like, but they're comfortable and happy. You know, I mean, I'm not sure they're not happy about everything, but they're happy and they have power and the whole bit. And they, you know, like I said, employee status, they're in a good place in AEW. Not the, you know, I mean, there's obviously issues, but, um, you know, I, I could see like of, of all of them, I thought them leaving would be not impossible, but a risk. Omega is, would have been, you know, a different thing. And, you know, they're all different, but they all want to stay together. So that leave, kind of put AEW in the driver's seat in a lot of ways, I think. Although, like, I have not heard that they've signed. I mean, they may have, but I have not heard that. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.